On today's episode of Green Bay Nation, it's the Packers and Seahawks duking it out for a spot in the NFC Championship game. We'll break it all down. And how big will home field advantage be for the Packers? Plus, who are some key players to keep an eye on? We'll tell you. That's coming up next on Green Bay Nation. Hello, welcome to Green Bay Nation. It's playoff time here in Titletown. I'm Lily Zam and joining me to chat about the Green Bay Packers. You guys know these guys. Editor and writer for Packer Report and creator of the Pack-A-Day podcast, Andy Herman, dressed in blue. Hey, sorry. Right? I'm just happy I'm not in like a bathroom. This is it's just getting anything on <laughs> that's semi-professional is a win for me. Oh, that's bad. Because you're sick. He's <laughs> exactly. sick. That's why. I was All right. wondering what you meant by that. Yeah. <laughs> and also in blue down there, Marcus Eversall, radio host on 107.5 and 1400 The Fan. Well, guys, obviously, Obviously, it's postseason football here in Titletown, and the Packers host the Seahawks on Sunday at 5.40 p.m. at Lambeau Field for, again, a spot in the NFC Championship game. Is it kind of fitting that in the playoffs the Packers would get Pete Carroll's squad considering the history they have in the postseason? I mean, it's kind of fitting at this point, right? It's very fitting. There's a lot of history here, some heartbreak, but the history does favor the home team. The home team is 3-0 all time between the Packers and the Seahawks in the postseason. Of course, there's that game January 18th, 2015, which nobody needs to hear about. That's the only negative part about a Packers-Seahawks game, is that there will be entirely too many references to that one specific Sunday, that 2015 January game that I have nothing else to say about. Yeah, I think we need to swap the narrative. I think we need to talk more about we want the ball and we're going to score. I think that was a much better memory. Uh, and I do think this is a perfect matchup for Green Bay. I think there's a lot of matchups individually that we'll get into later in the episode that I think are going to be really interesting to dive into. But, you know, right off the bat, you look at what Fletcher Cox did in the middle of that defense last week. Kenny Clark has to be licking his chops on what he might be able to do from the middle of that defense. Yeah, because again, if there is a weakness, it is there in that interior. Well, guys, I know a lot of folks are talking about um, thinking that the Saints could just march all over the Vikings at home, especially at home. But Mike Zimmer's defense and some good play by Kirk Cousins really got them the upset win in New Orleans. So I'm kind of curious. So what was a bigger shocker in your mind, that six seed win for the Vikings over uh, the Saints or the NFC side, the Titans taking out the Patriots on the road? For me, it was the Vikings winning in New Orleans. I wasn't all that surprised that the Titans beat the Patriots because I felt like they were just as good. The Patriots weren't playing very good football. The Vikings are such an interesting team because their roster is so good. They do not have many weaknesses. They have the talent to go and beat anybody anywhere. They just, for whatever reason, haven't been able to do it. And Lily, you hit on it with Kirk Cousins. That's We all know that's the narrative. He can't win big games on the road. He has never won a playoff game. They're capable of winning anywhere, but I just couldn't find it in myself to pick that game in the Superdome against a 13-3 Saints team as being the first time Kirk Cousins can just make it click. Yeah, I'm 100% with Marcus. I think from a Patriots standpoint, uh, they kind of won with some smoke and mirrors through the course of the season. And of course, you thought once Bill Belichick would get to the playoffs that that narrative would change. But they had kind of that playoff feel and atmosphere uh, in Week 17 against the Dolphins and came out completely flat. And you saw that again against the Titans. And I legitimately think that the Titans were simply the better team and they did not have an, uh, you know any way of stopping Derrick Henry. But uh, again, with Marcus as well, I, I didn't necessarily expect Minnesota to win. But uh, when you have playmakers like Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook, you have a puncher's chance in any game, and if Kirk Cousins can play like that, that team can win a lot of football games. Most certainly, and they then they have, and if they can shock the 49ers, I mean, that'll be crazy. Well, be crazy. this is kind of how it shakes out now in the postseason. Eight teams still in the mix to win the Super Bowl. We'll start on Saturday where the top-ranked 49ers will host the Vikings in that early game at 335, and then in that late game, the high-flying Ravens welcome in the Titans in primetime, and then on Sunday, it's the two seeds, the Chiefs and Texans square off at 205 and in that final divisional game your Packers take it on the Seahawks in the night game guys this weekend is gonna be fun it's always fun I mean wild card weekend's great and then the competition kind of stiffens up as you go on it, to me you look at it by conference the AFC it's kind of straightforward like I'd be surprised if either road team won in the AFC I like the Chiefs and I like the Ravens to advance the NFC, there's a little more intrigue. It's a little more interesting where you give the Vikings a puncher's chance to, to win out west against the Niners. You give the Seahawks maybe a chance to win at Lambeau Field. So, like, if you're power ranking all the eight teams remaining, you got the Niners, you got the Ravens, you got the Chiefs, and then those next three teams, you've probably got the NFC. So I feel like the NFC is a little more interesting, whereas the AFC, 
I'd expect the top two teams to advance. Yeah, I like the matchups on paper, and simply because they add a little bit of a different dynamic for each game. You know, you talk about that uh, Titans and Ravens game. That's a full-fledged slobber knocker with uh, both running games going to you know completely take over that game. Lamar Jackson's going to be able to do his thing. Ryan Tannehill's playing at a great level, but I think the running games are really going to be the dynamic there. Um, you know, from the the Chiefs and the Texans, I think you get two marquee quarterbacks. We're going to throw it all over the place. The Packers, Seahawks, you get two quarterbacks that like to play off script and kind of do their own thing. And I think you're going to see a lot of that as well. Minnesota, San Francisco, I think those running games are going to be very, very important to set up the play action. So uh, kind of interesting concepts that kind of play similarly between both teams. But I think that sets up for both matchups or all matchups being very interesting dynamics. Yeah, and if the wild card round is any sort of indication, I think we'll be in for some good games in the divisional round. All right, there's more to come on the show. How well does Green Bay match up with Seattle? We'll talk about that next. Thank you.